Welcome back. So here we are in the fifth of ten exercises in this first module. Now we've got some instructions on what they want us to do. And they gave us some insights over here. And they're saying, hey, you need to get the purchase price. You need to have some constants in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So constants, I like to do that housekeeping up front. But let's you know, let's go do our things that we've done before. We'll go ahead and quest inputs. Compute the results. And display the results. Those are going to be some traditional things that we'll deal with. Let's say declare constants. Now, how do we know something is a constant? Annual interest rate. That's not a constant, a variable. I can't use that syntax. So I've got to do this a little bit more formally. And let's say it's going to be 12% on this line I'm going to declare annual rate all uppercase all capital letters separate words by an underscore not a dash underscore when needed so annual rate assigned a value of 0.12 12% is 0.12 we have less. Uh, next is down payment is 10% of the purchase price. Well, we don't even have purchase price yet. Let's let's deal with that in a little bit. And then monthly rate is 5% of the purchase price. Well, our monthly payment is. Let's come up with a monthly rate. There's an annual rate. And the monthly rate is that divided by 12. We need the inputs. And the inputs, let's do the first one, which is going to be purchase price. So let's come up with the purchase price first. Enter the purchase price. So they gave us one of the inputs, purchase price. Constants, they gave us that. Um, I'm surprised that they don't have this laid out the way that they had in previous ones to where we could see exactly, boom, 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 each, each line of what's taking place. But we've got to get the purchase price because they told us get the purchase price. Let's calculate the down payment because they said down payment is 10% of the purchase price. All right. Now that I have purchase price, let's figure out what down payment is. So this is a calculation. So this is computations that's taking place so I calculated down payment took purchase price which was an input stored it now I used it in a calculation now the purchase price is that purchase price less down payment so I need to reduce the purchase price by the down payment. So this is how much I've got to finance. So I've got things I need to do. I need to come up with my monthly payment 
And they said monthly payments 5% of the purchase price. And I'll define month and I want to come up with the balance. Go ahead and put that in, monthly payment, with month, and whatever the balance is. From there, let's go ahead and print the header for this table. Here's the header for that table. Here's the table right here. Month starting balance. That's it. It's just a string. And if I went through and counted off each character one by one, that's how I need to separate this out later on. And I'll go ahead. I'm going to jump forward just a bit. Put some lines of code in there so we can get it up a little higher. I'm going to put in another print statement. My header, month, starting balance, interest, principal to pay. That's exactly how they have it here. Um, principal, monthly payment, and what's left remaining. I oh, know, that's my variables. I'm sorry. Month, starting balance, interest to pay, principal to pay, payment, and ending balance. That's exactly as it is here. This next one is going to be the variables that we used. Month, balance, interest, oh, I don't have this in here. So we'll come up with that at some point where the interest is. All right. Principal. And I don't have that either. So principal and interest, I need you. Monthly payment. I got that one. And remaining. Mm, don't have that yet either. Okay. So we've got to come up with a loop that walks through this step by step by step. And if we think about it logically, we're going to pay this note off. And the purchase price is where we start. And how do you know you're done paying it off? Well, your balance is zero. So our balance, we need to get our balance down to zero. So as long as our balance is greater than zero, we're gonna pay for this, whatever it is that we're dealing with, buying a computer. Okay, so with that said, We're going to go through line by line. Let's say while balance is greater than zero, colon, enter. So now I'm in this while loop. <clears throat> now, what do I want to do in the while loop? Well, I want to perform some calculations. I also want to print out the results of each of those calculations. So that's what we did here. So what are the calculations that I got to do? Well, let's think about this. As long as what I need to pay is greater than as long as my monthly payment is greater than the balance my monthly payment is how, how much I got to pay each month the last month may be smaller 
So as long as my monthly payment is greater than how much I've got left to pay, let's perform a calculation. So if, uh, remember what I said, I'm gonna copy it, but they've done that for me. Monthly payment is greater than balance. Capitalization matters there. Colon, now we're in this conditional statement, if one. Monthly payment equals balance. Interest equals zero. Now there's our loop. Let's come down. Let's say the payment is not greater than the balance. So this is, we got down and our balance is so small that it's bigger than the payment. This deals with, this section of code deals with the last payment. Any payments before the last payment, we're gonna deal with now. Oop, I missed an L. And what are we going to say? We're going to say interest. Make sure it's capitalized and we take the choice there. Equals balance times what's our monthly rate? There we go. So each time we go through, we calculate what the interest is. I'm not in that conditional anymore, but I'm still in this loop. And I'm gonna come up with my principal. So principal equals monthly payment minus interest. That's how much being applied to the principal and remaining equals balance minus monthly payment. Okay. Printed off, once we've printed that one off, we want to change balance to equal what we have left to pay remaining and increase the number of month. Month plus equals one, increase month by one. Now, That's what we've got to do in a nutshell, but I want to explain something that's taking place in here. That's the header at the top of this chart. See it? Here, this is walking us through line by line. Right. Boom, line by line. This will walk us right on through that chart. This line is printing out each line in the chart. Percent two, D, percent 15.2. That line right there. That line right there. That's telling us what's taking place, I should say, significant part of it. So it's the formatting on what we're dealing with. All right. 
So this is spacing out, saying how we're going to format what we're doing. So this is saying we're printing this thing out as a string and dropping these in at each one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. We don't put spaces in there. We don't. This is just telling us how many spaces and how far in the type of formatting that we're using. Okay. Point two, decimal places. So this is what's going to space this thing out to where it looks like columns. These spaces align with the number of characters that we see up here in the top of the columns. Right. So when we go run this, purchase price that they input, uh, they didn't tell us what to do. I'm going to go ahead and switch over and see, let's say, $100 purchase price. Start it. $100. Enter. There it goes. Let's see if this likes what we did. There it goes. Now, had I stretched this out a little bit more, it would have looked prettier. There you see it. Ran through the exact same thing. 90 all the way down. The spacing that we had got us where we needed to be. And the number of decimal places, all of it. It's it all laid out how we wanted it. Okay. So it looks like yeah, they were all good. I check to see for specific lines of output. For line one, it needed to be a certain value. Line six, or the number of months as six, specific values. Had any of them been off, it would have had a problem. And we see it here. These are the numbers we saw. It tested for one month, three months, and eight months. That's all it went and looked for. So, straightforward in a way, some new concepts you may not have dealt with before. Like I said, I'm not so much focused on at this point you digging deep into the math just understanding the process that we're going through and the rules to the game constants uppercase variable camel case you typecasted acquired inputs performed calculations set initial values to variables just went right on down the line item by item what we did we had four loops before four in range now we're dealing with a while loop okay. that got us through this so we'll head on to exercise six